so this is my life, living deep underground, safe from the dangers above. The last members of humanity living in harmony as the war rages on. The land above decimated by the years of war between the skibbity toilets and the cameramen. Wait, wait a minute. What the hell is a skibbity toilet? Skibbity toilets, alien creatures who resemble toilets with protruding human heads, have engaged in a war with people who have CCTV cameras, speakers and televisions for heads amid a dark and dystopian landscape. The war has decimated most of the world forcing those humans who are left to seek shelter underground. This is their story. And this is where our problem lies. Well, you see, we're running out of supplies. And now I have to journey to the surface and see if I can survive 100 days running from the skibbity toilets. Apparently, our first task was finding a man by the name of Kubeeb. I gotta find Kubeeb. Kubeeb. All right, let's have a look around. This is our underground basement where we are safe. I think Kubeeb is in here. Hello. There you are. These things are not normal. They have taken over the city and they're growing daily. We must survive. So I'm on a mission. I've got to go out and get supplies and hopefully not die. Uh, all right, let's have a look around the rest of the base. What else have we got? This is open and close. All right, so that's the way out. We don't want to go there just yet. Let's go back this way. And let's see what we've got going on here. Uh, these are our chests. Ooh. As I began looking through the chests, I discovered, yes, indeed, we were running out of supplies. There were still some good items of which I could use in the field. Some very good items. Pants, there's some elytra. Now that I was well equipped, it was time to go to the surface and see exactly what I'd be dealing with. Oh my god. Hundred days challenge. What the? Oh my god, did you see that? What was that? Oh my god. Okay. Uh, I need wood. I spent the first day gathering resources, making sure to keep an eye out for any enemies and soon scurried back to the safety of the bunker. That time bad. We're going downstairs. Okay. Close. As I drifted off to sleep, I could hear the sounds of the skibbity toilets above. And in the morning, I noticed that we had a counter for how many days I had survived. That's two. The next few days were spent exploring the area. This is where I discovered that there were all of these supply drops. The only problem was I had to defeat the robots before I could get to them. Oh God. Oh. Okay, so they don't really care who's who. They just attack everybody. What is this? The crates themselves were filled with supplies. I suddenly had a plan to get as many of these crates as possible. During my exploration, I also came across a wandering trader. And like usual, he was useless. As I explored further out, I came across an abandoned playground. After defeating the robots, I discovered to my horror the decapitated remains of my fellow humans. For some reason, I felt a need to collect them. I don't know why. Day four brought me a surprise. A brand new friend. Half man, half machine. I named him Larry. I decided that I wanted to keep him. I needed a boat. Eventually, I managed to get him back inside the bunker. I decided to put him somewhere safe. Right. You guys can stay there. Well, at least I thought it was safe. You see, the next morning, I discovered that somebody, not mentioning anyone, had left the gates open. And our entire bunker was now filled with skibbity toilets. It was time to flush them out. <laughs> get it? Flush them? Toilets? Sorry, I'll get back to it. Yuck! Yuck! Yeah, come on. Give me toilets. What are you doing in our base? Oh my god, there's so many of them. After ridding our bunker of the toilets, it was clear we needed better defenses. I began building walls around our entrance. A nice little castle with a walkway to keep an eye on things around us. And I even put in a nice little chicken coop for our one lonely chicken. Day seven, and I decided to explore further. Although, upon leaving the house, uh, I came face to face with a robotic rhinoceros. Yes, yikes. a rhinoceros. 
Those things are terrifying. As I journeyed further out into the wilderness, I discovered that the skibbity toilets had evolved. They now shot lasers. Terrifying lasers. And stupidly, I got myself a little too close. Before I knew it, I was surrounded by skibbity toilets. Beams flying everywhere. I was fighting for my life. It was time to retreat. The only problem is, they were following. Having eluded most of the toilets, some of them were still determined to destroy me and followed me all the way back to my base. I was safe. And that's when I discovered a weakness in my design. Turns out, the skibbity toilets can fire through the walls of my castle. I think I need to rethink my defenses. I decided the best course of action was to build a moat. The only problem was the skibbity toilets were not going to let me dig in peace. But thankfully, after defeating them, I worked tirelessly through the night to finish my moat. Day 9 brought the introduction of a brand new friend. A very large friend. Or well, at least I thought he was my friend, until he attacked me. Maybe my moat needs to be bigger. Um, uh, excuse me, sir. What, uh, what exactly do you want? Ow! Day 12 brought about an entirely new problem. This one wasn't related to the enemies, but more a glitch in the game. You see, every time I sleep, it is supposed to change how many days I've survived. And for some reason, it wasn't doing that anymore. How am I supposed to keep track of how long I've survived? I needed a new way. And then suddenly, I came up with a very morbid idea. You see, I'd been collecting the heads of all of those people that had been killed by the skibbity toilets. So why don't I use them as day counters? I mean, surely I have enough of them. And so I decorated my base with the deceased remains of the human race as a record of how many days I had survived. I know, there's something wrong with me. It was obvious to me now we were running out of supplies. I would need to explore further. It was time to enter the city. But before I do that, I'm gonna need to repair my items. With trepidation in my heart, I ventured into the heart of the city. The destroyed buildings loomed above me. And as I entered, I realized I was not alone. As the sun set on the city, I realized I needed a safe place to hide. I broke into one of the old buildings. Unfortunately, I picked the wrong building. It was filled with skibbity toilets. It was time to fight. Uh-oh. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, take that. After clearing out the toilets, I made sure the building was secure. I'd rest here for the night. In the morning, I collected more of my companions. I still needed day counters, and then proceeded to explore further into the city. As I explored the dangers of the city, uh. I came across a very odd danger. A mechanical rhinoceros doing some shopping. I decided it was better to leave them to their own business and quietly crept away. Nice rhinoceros. As I marked day 22 with another severed head, I ventured back into the city. By now, I had a good routine. Defeat the robots, take the loot. But I still had to be careful. There were a lot of enemies around. Oh god. Oh, there's lots of them. Oh, there's lots of them. Yo. And sometimes I would get swarmed. Come on. Come on. Oh. Ow. Ooh, that was lucky. As I explored further into the city, I came across a strange settlement. It looked abandoned. I thought this might be a good chance to find some loot. Or maybe not. As I explored the abandoned uh -oh. camp, I realized I was not alone. A giant robot was watching me. I decided better of it and retreated. Day 23, I found the Great Library. Oh, this looks interesting. Although the building was in bad condition, mm. the books weren't. I found a library. Look at all these books. <laughs> I harvested all the books, decided to stay here for the evening and journeyed back to my base. Now that I had the harvested books, I could make myself an enchanting table and set about to enchant both my sword and my armor. This ought to be good for dealing with the skibbity toilets. After a hard day of enchanting, I rested, knowing that in the morning I would venture out once again and defeat the toilets. Now that's a weird sentence to say. 
The next day, while exploring the city, I discovered a new type of monster. This one was a snake. It was terrifying. I didn't want to get too close, but unfortunately it had seen me and the chase began. As they chased me through the city, I miraculously managed to survive by climbing one of the buildings. Thankfully, they can't climb. The only problem is now I'm stuck up here. It looks as if I'm going to be spending the night sitting on top of this building. At least I'll be safe, I hope. In the morning, I checked to see if the creatures had gone. Most of them had. There was still a rhinoceros, but I took a chance. I quickly scaled down the building, dispatched the rhinoceros, and made my escape back into the city. And while doing so, I found where the enemies were coming from. Spawners. Lots of spawners. I'm going to have to deal with these. I carefully snuck up to the site of the spawners, trying to figure out if I could deal with them. Unfortunately, my timing was really bad. The skibbity toilets came forth and attacked me. They were outnumbering me. It was time to retreat. Besides, I've got a better idea. I returned to the base to gather some materials. I'm going to need some sand. Lots of sand. Because now, I've got TNT. <laughs> this time, I chose to approach the spawners at night, figuring there'd be less enemies around. As I finally approached, I noticed there were a few toilets in the street. I picked my moment and ran. Okay, As gone. I approached the spawners, the enemies encroached on me. I quickly planted the TNT and detonated it. I was successful, but now they were chasing me. As I tried to elude the enemy, oh God, I came across another set of spawners. I wasn't going to leave until I destroyed these as well. Yo. Thankfully, I managed to get them, but now I had a huge army of toilets chasing me. I needed to find somewhere safe. I managed to reach the nearest building. Getting inside, I barricaded the doors and found that I was safe. I'm going to stay here for the night and hopefully the toilets have gone elsewhere. In the morning, I carefully checked the entrance. I was alone and I was able to escape, being victorious. Day 30 and I decided to go on an adventure. I was going to climb the tallest building I could find. I decided I should probably take some elytra. As chances are, I'll probably fall off the building. As I left my home, I was greeted by a door-to-door -door salesman. And like most door-to-door -door salesmen, he was useless. As I entered the city, I looked up to the great building above and began the perilous climb. Up and up I went until finally I reached the top. Higher than the clouds themselves, I could see the entire city. It was a magnificent sight. And one thing I did notice, there were no toilets up here. And that's when I noticed something strange. On a building on the opposite side, there was a villager. He was trapped. I formed a plan. I need to rescue this guy. I leaped into action and flew across the gap, landing safely on his building. Hello, buddy. I've come to help you. Hi. Now there was only the problem of how do we get down. Suddenly, I came up with an idea that I thought was going to be brilliant. I need to build a boat. All right. Okay. Let's break this. The two of us will just sail down the side of the building in a boat. I mean, how hard can it be? And as the two of us jumped into the boat and launched ourselves off the side of the building, a thought crossed my mind. You don't take fall damage from boats, right? Turns out you do take fall damage. But only if you fall exactly 49 blocks. I mean, what are the chances that I fall exactly 49 blocks? Whoops. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, why not check out this video where I secretly planted 100,000 carrots on a streamer's SMP. Hope you enjoy.